Hello friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Bernard. I've been asked to explain how is it possible to hold the violin, play the violin without a shoulder rest, especially if you've been using a shoulder rest. Well, I actually had that experience. I, I might say, you know, for many, many years, many years, I used a shoulder rest. And I never could get comfortable. I tried all kinds of different shoulder rests. I think the shoulder rests available today are pretty good. Um, and they stay on the violin. That was one of the issues when I was young. My shoulder rest would always be slipping around. It's so frustrating. So one day I said, that's it. I'm done. I'm just, I'm going to go without a shoulder rest. I didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> it's, not, it's not quite as easy as that. And what I have discovered is there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, maybe three important factors to going without the shoulder rest. One is to have some variety of chin rests to try and use. This one, you can see, is pretty flat. It's normally, these are, these are called, for no particular reason that I know of, they're called the flat ones of the Guarneri style. And then the kinds that I use a lot, they have this big bump right in here. So I can hook, hook my chin right in here. And these are called the Stradivari, Stradivari model, Strad models, Strad models. So I suggest you have a flat one and a one with a hook. So you can try. There are other models which I don't use, and some that fit right over the tailpiece, which I don't use. So that's that's one issue. The other thing is that when the violin is resting here, you could easily get some of the steel right into your collarbone. So what I always do is I have a I have a sock that I put there and I cover my collarbone. Nobody sees it or hardly ever sees it. And, just, and it's not a thick sock. You could try different thickness socks. I've experimented with that also. find the thick ones give too much bounce. So have, have something um, underneath. I remember Isaac Stern, who didn't use the shoulder rest, but also he put a big foam pad. And, um, you know, it was kind of weird because the foam pad, he would press up right against the back of his violin, which would kind of deaden the sound. That's one of the great benefits when you use a shoulder rest, the violin is held away from your body and there's more resonance. And many people think it's actually louder and it might be. You know, there's a lot of arguments whether it's louder with or without the shoulder rest. But let's just talk about from a comfort standpoint. I myself, one of the reasons that I changed from using a shoulder rest to going without was I was having all kinds of back issues. My lower back would be so tight because I was crunching, going like this with my shoulder and actually trying to hold the violin by itself so that my hand would be completely free. Well, I, f I did discover later that when I have the violin like this, I just I have it slightly hooked right with my chin and I'm not trying to hold it up that way. There's no, there's really no strain in my back. So all the weight of this, you know, the violin's not very heavy, right? A couple of pounds. It's all in my arm. That's, that's the whole thing. So my back problems went away completely when I went without the shoulder rest. So that's a biggie. I myself personally, every once in a while, I'll put a shoulder rest on to see what it feels like. And I can't, I don't feel at one with the instrument. I feel like it's got a superstructure and the violin's bouncing around. Whereas when it's resting, this part is resting right on my right on my body. It's not it's not going to bounce for me. Now the other detail, which I think is very important, and you can look at my very very beginner videos that I've just made, is that I'm not either holding the violin here, and I'm not doing this with my thumb. I'm not holding the violin out here. I have a crutch. And the crutch supports under the instrument. And you see, the violin won't fall away because I've got this little hook out here on my on my chin rest. And I just have that much hook, and I'm all over the instrument. You see that because of the because of the crutch, let me turn the other way. 
and you could see what my thumb does. Oh. <laughs> when will I learn how to do this? There I go. Now you'll see, I'm all over the instrument. And my thumb is very, very flexible. I have to do something like this. I'm not grabbing the violin like this. So, and of course, this is this is just me, because you can find players like Itzhak Perlman. And we always used to talk about Itzhak Perlman's banana thumb sticking up like this. And you can look at old old videos of Heifetz. And you know, talent will do amazing things, you know. I mean, it's conceivable I'm not a great talent on violin, but I'm a decent player. But maybe I, you know, reach a little higher level because I have really, really solid techniques that I use. So that's about the, the size of it. Get yourself a sock or something to protect your collarbone. Get yourself a couple of chin rests and go for it. You know, if you have any other questions, please put comments down below. But good luck. I think it's an, it's an enjoyable thing to really feel at one with the instrument when you're not using a shoulder rest. And that's, back in my day, the greats all went without shoulder rest. I could think of so many. Stern, Oistra, Kogan, Grumion, Milstein, um, many, many more of Hatsunina. If we get this, another fabulous player, Ruggiero Ricci, you know, Erica Morini, so many of the great players. I, I can't remember a single great, great artist who used the shoulder rest, but that's not the way it is today. Many, many of the great players today use shoulder rest. So find your, find your own way. Best of luck to you. Thanks for listening. See you on the next video.